And the next lecture will be given by uh, Ilya Bryukhanov from Moscow. Good. So, dear colleagues, I'd like to talk about my results uh, of one study heat transporting graphene by a molecular dynamics simulation. So, I'll start from a brief review of experimental works uh, which considers bo ballistic heat transport. So, so around uh, 30 years ago, experimentalists observed that when a material is cooled to above temperatures, just like few degrees, when heat pr propagation is no more diffusive, it's, it looks like a, a passage of waves, waves coming fr from the source. So, and they tra travels with the speed of a sound. In, in material. So also they can uh, observe the picture of heat in, in, in material and, and show how this uh, heat pulses tra travels inside. So another feature of a ballistic heat flux is that it could be concentrated along with a certain direction of material because of anisotropy of materials. So if you take a look at this slide, we can see that in, in the point D, there are only those uh, pulses that travels inside the range of angles, like here, from uh, minus 20 to 20. So that's another feature of a ballistic heat flux. So also I should mention that even around one hundred years ago, experimentalists uh, were able to to see uh, heat uh, images like in uh, isotropic materials, and they are no longer isotropic, like like like, like this one. So I'll move forward. Uh, so modern experimental technique could uh, be used to observe. Uh, like images of uh, heat uh, in many materials, even at uh, infinite temperature, like this one and this one. So, uh, considering graphene, um, it was shown by the experimental devices that it has very high thermal conductivity, so much higher than for usual metal like copper. But what is more to be mentioned that it is length dependent, suggesting that uh, heat propagation mechanism is no longer diffusive and uh, like uh, mixed, like some transition from ballistic to diffusive. So my goals of, of, of the study is uh, that I'm going to do some molecular dynamic simulation of unsteady heat problems in graphene with a different interatomic potential. So I'm going to show you how initial circle temperature disturbance will pro pro propagate for a different interatomic potential. Then I will show how sinusoidal temperature distribution will relax and how it depends on crystal direction. Though I should, I will mention about the role of background temperature and so and how it influences the results. So first of all, I should say that there are plenty of interatomic potential for graphene, just like this one. So in my work, I will use uh, these two terms of potential uh, and then rebel potential and LCBOP potential. Those potential could be uh, compared by cal calculating dispersion curves, temperature uh, depends on G point, on, on uh, frequency, and uh, how lattice constant dependent temperature. All this potential give uh, quite a good results, but uh, in the paper of in International Journal of Heat and Mass Transfer, it was shown that uh, these two potential uh, are good compared to all the other. So 
I should mention that uh, terms of potential in, in 1989 has the uh, highest uh, uh, group velocity among all of the, all of the, of the others. So um, now I'm going to tell you uh, the, my problem. So I have a periodic cell of a graphene with a, a circle inside. Uh, so the length and the, the height of the, the graphene is around um, 18, so 118 nanometers and the, uh, the, the circle is around 12 nanometers. So I, uh, so initially I add velocities of atoms uh, according to Maxwell distribution. And the temperature in, in this area is higher than uh, background temperature by 20 Kelvin. So then I integrate uh, Newton's equation without any uh, additional thermostats or bar stats. And then to average the results, I collect around 1,000 realization. And then I average kinetic energies of all the atoms in the city. So here are the results. So it is uh, surprising me that uh, the, the only potential that uh, shows wave-like prop propagation is the old Joseph potential. So we see that there is a minimum inside and uh, six peaks around, which mainly carries the heat outside of the center. All the others potential they show completely a different picture. Instead, there is a peak in the middle of the of the of our system, and six peaks. So they move the heat outside, but uh, the amplitude of these peaks uh, is smaller than for this potential. So, but among all this potential, we see that the picture is qualitatively uh, similar and it differs only in, in that how fast these peaks travel. So to uh, compare our results with analytics, we we calculate radius of duration, which is a measure of the distance that heat travels. So we see that for all the potential the dependence of this radius against the time is quite linear, except for CBOP potential, which like slightly diverges from linear. So this agrees with the analytics solution for harmonic crystal. So it is quite uh, um, it is quite uh, <clears throat> expected results as we consider zero background temperature. So that's what happens when uh, the background temperature is, uh, is not zero. So it's like finite. We see that for low background temperature, there is also uh, peaks inside and six peaks that travels. So this peaks travels along with the zigzag direction. So, but when the background temperature increases, we see that the results quite um, mix with the, with the uh, lattice disturbances around. And the, me the mechanisms of propagation is more like a diffusive one. So this is, uh, this results are shown for potential terse of uh, 2010. And next I'm going to, to show results for CBO people potential. And we see that uh, the character of prop propagation have, has no uh, anisotropic. Uh, so it's like a diffusive uh, for all, uh, all the background temperatures. So we uh, 
also plot uh, the radius of duration against the time, which we calculated uh, taking as a temperature minus the background temperature. And we see that after initial relaxation, which uh, happens as, and when we created this atomic velocity, they first uh, relaxed. Then we see that uh, it increases, but uh, it increases much higher for low te uh, temperatures than for higher temperatures. So we uh, suggest that uh, there are strong scattering processes that uh, re reduce the propagation of heat. So next problem is the relaxation of sinusoidal temperature distribution. We used the smaller size of the cell. It's around 30 nanometers in each direction. We created a sinusoidal uh, temperature distribution by this formula with a, a different um, background temperature. So, uh, so we did almost the same kind of simulation. We integrate in terms of equation and then average the results over 1,000 realization. During these realizations, we average kinetic energies of atom in YS labs and then uh, construct the temperature profile and then uh, found this B, uh, uh, B dependence on time. So here are the, the results for zigzag orientation. We see that uh, almost for each potential we used, there is some oscill oscillation like behavior, like it is non um, monotonous, it's like have oscillations. And uh, the property of uh, tests of uh, 1989 potential that it has a peak uh, here. So we, we, we cannot see this peak for all the other potential. So, uh, when we increase the background temperature, we see that the, the relaxation goes faster. So, for example, this green line shows no oscillation uh, uh, here, like compared to blue line. So, also, if we so try to if we try to approximate the, this uh, relaxation profile, we could uh, obtain that it, uh, it is close to power law, which agrees uh, with analytic results. So these results are for zigzag orientation. Next, I'll show the results uh, of armchair orientation. We see that no oscillation we could see here. And also the, the, rel the re relaxation goes almost immediately. So it's much faster than for zigzag orientation. Suggesting that temperature relaxation occurs faster, much faster than for zigzag. Uh, so, and we can no longer approximate it via power law. So, and also we can see this peak for test of potential. So we try to compare our results with the experiments uh, which kind of uses the same uh, kind of uh, sinusoidal relaxation in graphite. They obtain close uh, relaxation profiles. So they're kind of close to the, uh, to the ones we obtained, but uh, the times in their experiments much longer than in ours because they, uh, their grading periods much longer than in our works. Uh, also, we could see that uh, they have this peak for low temperatures, as we have for just of 1989, suggesting that maybe at this temperature, the mechanism is, is more like a diffuser than uh, a transition. So, um, yeah, so qualita qualita qualitatively, our results agrees with uh, the results. So, and I'll uh, come to the to the conclusions. So, we show that uh, heat conduction graphene is anisotropic uh, for low temperatures. But when the temperature increases, it uh, looks like uh, more like diffuse. 
and uh, more dominant heat tra transfer is along the zigzag direction. Also, we show that um, I think with the increase of temperature, the relaxation of the temperature goes much faster. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ilya, for your talk. Uh, so, now we have some time for questions. I'm sorry if uh, my question uh, will be stupid. Uh, why are there so much uh, branches uh, of uh, dispersion relations? Can you explain? Uh, so, what, to what so the, um, all these uh, re relations, so they were not obtained by me, they were obtained in this work. So they consist of uh, three acoustic branches by green lines uh, and uh, three optic branches. And they are compared to experimental results, which are shown by triangles and all this, uh, all this, like, not uh, lines. So, and they are uh, compared for all this potential with experiments. And they were shown that uh, this potential and this one have the most close agreement with experiments. So, yeah, and the, the, the short answer is that uh, the number of these curves is equal to the number of decrease of freedom of the unit cell. Yeah, yeah, so sure, in graphene, sure. you, you have two particles, and the, each particle has three degrees of freedom in this case. Yeah, then you yeah. have six branches. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, please? I'll show some. This one, I think, is the most attractive <laughs> pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, so maybe i will ask another question okay. actually regarding this uh, this picture mm -hmm. uh, it's not actually a question it's a comment so i think this uh, the presence of this peak in the center is uh, simply caused by the fact that for those potentials uh, the the group velocity for optical uh, waves uh, is uh, small in th that is why the energy kind of doesn't spread from the center. It spreads, but with very short, uh, with very mm, small velocity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, as you said, uh, in the beginning, Terzov 1989 has the highest. Um, but not uh, that is why optical castle. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, we should try to analyze these results in this manner. But I, I said that uh, Terzov uh, has the highest uh, acoustic wave. Yeah, so that's not that is why you have the castle instead of one peak. So in the beginning, uh, all of those uh, mm, profiles look like a Gaussian function, but yeah. this time it uh, separates into several I don't know, same, several castles, one which corresponds to uh, acoustic waves and another corresponding to optical wave. Uh, and if velocity of these uh, waves is high, then uh, this separation uh, is fast. If it's low, then for a long time you have a peak in the center. So your results are perfectly consistent. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for that comments. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, thank okay. you, Ilya, once again for your interesting talks.